Hello, Oddjob Doer here, and for now it's time for another cookbook review. So, it already shows on tile where it is, but guess what? There it is. Fallout, The Vault Dweller's Official Cookbook by Victoria Rosenthal. Now, to start with, uh, this is a pretty neat cookbook. I can sum up already. <clears throat> it has inside, uh, you know, nice artwork from the games. And it's very much written in the tone as a real vault dweller has written it. It, it runs the gambit of recipes. It has uh, some basics as appetizers, soups and stews, sides, desserts, main dishes, and even covers a good section on drinks here. Because as you know, if you play the games, there's quite a few different kinds of drinks in here. And she puts up recipes for like Nuke Cola, Nuke Cola Quantum, Quantium, uh, Nuco Cherry, Nuka Cola Quartz, you know, um, even down to Rot Gut, Fire Belly, Daddy O's. They have a thing for stem packs in here, and even Rataway recipes to get that radiation away from you. And uh, they have a nice introduction here, it goes over it. And they have a part on dietary restrictions if you happen to have some dietary restrictions in your life. They talk about adapting recipes to the, the vegetarian diets, uh, gluten free diets and adapting to lactose-free diets. And this is still written under the uh, like theme of a vault dweller writing this. And so basically, Victoria Rosenthal, uh, she's done another cookbook, I think, out there at least. And she's also has a website that I'll throw out here, Pixelated Provisions. Let me see that there. Pixelated provisions. So if you really want to see a lot of really neat themed uh, game inspired recipes, uh, you should head to that website and, and check it out. She has quite the imagination, it seems like, on a lot of different recipes out there. Uh, this, this particular book is not too old. Um, let me see what we got here. I can find a date. And so being not, not too old, it's still available at your booksellers. I've seen prices as low as $8 and something, up to, I think, you know, $20 and something. So there's quite a variety of prices available out there. You may not be finding this book, you know, second hand, because I really don't think anyone would want to give up this book. So let's see what we got here. Um, nope, because we're into recipes. So. We have recipes here. This is like the start of them. We had appetizers, and like you can see here, I'll, I'll just flip through and find something random. Let's see, you got soups and stews. Okay, so here, here's a good example. This here is a clam chowder, but it's crossed out, and actually it's called Gulper Solray. Solray. Mm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And you know, it shows you the ingredients you need, like any good cookbook book should do. It shows you a nice picture of what the finished dish could look like. It has instructions for it. It has some uh, little footnotes in here on the recipes. And also a, um, kind of an overview at the top here about what inspired the recipe from the game. And another nice little fun facts is off to the side here, they do have the difficulty, uh, prep time, cook time, serving time, how many servings, and what it pairs with. The pairs with is kind of interesting because, you know, sometimes it's pictured with something else, but it pairs with this instead. And the fun part is, is this little guy up here. By eating this item, this uh, gulper celery, you, you will get um, on your special stats, you get plus one intelligence for one hour. Alright. So, uh, you go through um, potato soup, cornbread muffins. Actually, it says blue cornbread muffin up there. Let's see, Joe's, Spunkles, Meatballs, Spunky. Hmm. Yeah, chicken and Croat, also, also known as your Red Scorpion. Right, and you can see it kind of does look like a maybe a section of a red scorpion's tail or something cut off and cooked. And see, so we're probably the main dishes. 
And it, look at that. Fancy Lad Snack Cakes. Whoever played the games and didn't want a Fancy Lad Snack Cake. Right there, nice little picture of them. You know, yum. And so basically, I am going to um, choose a recipe from this cookbook and uh, make it. And show you how it is. Let's see here. We've got drinks here. Now, this might be hard to get. Nuka Cola Quantum bottle in that shape. But it gives you the recipe to make the, the drink out of it. So a lot of themed arts, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of fun looking recipes, and um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll check it out. We'll make a uh, recipe from this book and see how it is. Because you know, a real cookbook's nothing if the recipes don't work, right? Stem packs. Looks like some little little um, syringe needle things. You know, here's your here's your radway over here. Might be kind of hard to find those containers, or maybe you don't really want those containers. I don't know. Oh, punches, artwork, and in the back there is. Let's see. A little little wrap about the author here. And yeah, that's her blog, the Pixelated Provisions. And she did that in 2012. Uh, she has a lifelong passion for video games and food. And um, also says she does graphics for NASA. So that's great. The only thing that I think would be down on this cookbook, from someone that likes cookbooks here, is there's not a real index in the back. You got your, your beginning contents here. But, you know, let's say if you want to say, I don't know, find a recipe on fish or, you know, a certain kind of meat or a certain ingredient. That's not summed up here in the back. But, don't let that deter you. Because this here is a nice cookbook. Even has your, your Blamco cheese in there, which looks delicious. I read through that recipe. And, um, yeah, so retail value on this thing Thirty-five dollars, but you know there's plenty of places to buy it for less than thirty-five dollars. So let me get on to the recipe and uh, work on that. All right, and that's the recipe we're gonna be doing here. It's the um, poached angler recipe. Now this is cod there, but it's, you know poached angler and. Uh, I'll do a run over of the ingredients here. So, what you have here is you got, let's see, a tablespoon of canola oil, uh, one two inch piece of fresh ginger peeled and minced, uh, one lemongrass stalk, four cloves of minced garlic, one and a half cups of vegetable broth. Mm. Vegetable broth. Uh, one teaspoon of lime zest, two and a half cups of coconut milk, one tablespoon of fish sauce, one pound boneless skinless cod cut into uh, five pieces, uh, three baby bok choy quartered, five shiitake mushrooms stemmed and sliced, two tablespoons of lime juice, and salt and pepper. Now I'll be downsizing this recipe a little bit to about two pieces of cod, so the sauce, I don't know. The sauce maybe will come out a lot, maybe will come out a little. The picture shows it here with rice, right? And I think this would go good with rice. They suggest on the side here, first of all, they have this um, little readout here. Difficulty easy, prep time 30 minutes, cook time 30 minutes, servings 5, and it pairs well with roasted potatoes. That it might, but uh, tonight we're just doing this and some salad. Now, right off the bat here, I have on the cooktop some uh, shiitakes going. And basically, you can find them fresh, but I have them also dried. You can find them a lot easier dried in some Asian markets, whatnot, or even grocery stores. And just, you know, put in some boiling water there and let them go at it for a while. Giving them a stir so you can get both sides of it going. And that's going to bring them back to their normal shiitake cells. Now the other ingredient, which is not too common, is 
lemongrass. So what we have here, stalk of lemongrass. And uh, you know, if you pull this off a little bit, you know, there could be some dirt there, you know, a little dirt up here. And so what we'll do with this here is I'll actually wash it somewhat and then probably slice off the end and do some thin slices of this. And I'm pretty sure lemongrass you don't eat. It's just there for flavoring. I mean, I've seen it in restaurants and it's always been in like you know, different soups and stuff and it's always been really chewy. So let me prepare that and I'll prepare the rest of the ingredients and we'll get back to it. Alright, so we've got about a little inch of uh, fresh ginger here. And it's a little bit hard to work with. If you look at it closely, I already shaved off this part up here. Down here you got this skin. And so uh, I think you take a pillar or you know, take a very sharp special knife here. And uh, just kind of go like this. And yes, that's bad practice. You want to actually go like this, more towards the cutting board. All right. And now ginger you can actually find in the stores a lot of time processed in uh, tubes or some other way. So if you need fresh minced ginger, ginger, you can just get that tube. Now then, other ingredients we got here is uh, we got the four cloves of garlic, right? Something like that. They want the mince. So what you do with that is usually you take if you have a knife like this flat, go like this, smash it down, and then you just chop to your uh, heart's desire. Making sure you don't get your fingers in the way. All right. A little scrape off there. All right. Get a little chop chop. And uh, I'll be doing that with the other cloves of garlic. And the last ingredient I can show you here before I prepare our second to last is uh, the lime. So I like to look for a lime like this, a real nice dark one, rich looking. And uh, wash it real good. And this is going to be for zesting. You get yourself a grater. And if you ever know, you know, you get your, your big grate here, you have your slicer, you have something like a little finer grate, and you have this little, little, you know, zesting grate basically. Just kind of put like that. And you go ahead and rub this something down on it, give it a little turn. And what you're trying to do to get the zest off is um, basically work it down like so. You don't want the white part underneath the green in this, or if you're taking lemon zest, you don't want the white part underneath the, the lemon, you just want the top part. And you know you do good when you get a really good uh, lemon, lime, whatever your zesting smell out of it. So. That there usually gathers up inside there, so you just tap it and knock it down. Bring that, uh, I'll do that in a little bit. And last but not least, we have this here, lemongrass. So it comes in these stalks. You can use the top parts, I think, for teeth and stuff, but for cooking, it's usually the stalks part. So I already cut the bottom off, took off some of the outer casings, and uh, it's a little bit tough, so make sure you get your sharp knife. And uh, like I said, just kind of, you know, slice away at it. And um, what we're doing with this thing is basically doing the flavor, of course. And so when this goes in, eventually this will be strained out. So let me prepare the rest of the ingredients here. What we, well, I guess I can show you what else we got. We got, um, besides the, the garlic, lime, lemongrass, we have some uh, coconut milk, comes in a can. Uh, we got some fish sauce. It looks a little like this, depending on what kind you get. This here is actually made with um, anchovies, waters, salt, and sugar. I'm sure there's other ones out there. We got our uh, vegetable stock over there. We'll have on this side our star of the moment, the angler or cod. Uh, we have our bok choy. Instead of using three stalks, I'm using about a stalk and a half for this one. And we're still using the five shiitake mushrooms. They are out from boil, they're pliable. I'm going to cut this middle part out and I will slice them. And I think that is it. So let me work more on the ingredients. All right, we'll so what I got in the pan here is a one tablespoon of the canola oil. And um, 
the minced ginger, the minced garlic, uh, the sliced lemongrass, and that's it. That's what it starts out with. And we're going to put some heat on this and get this kind of cooking for about five minutes. Just like so. Then next we'll be adding in the vegetable broth, which I'm using instead of the, I think, one and a half they asked for, I'm using one cup of vegetable broth. And um, you'll be adding the zest of the lime, which I'm going to add the whole zest of the lime, the uh, one teaspoon of that. So let me get back to zesting here while this uh, heats up, and I'll be back in five minutes. All right, as you can see, it's kind of... Uh, Got some color to it now, kind of browned up some. So we'll add in our vegetable broth. A little bit glazing there. And we'll add in our table, no, teaspoon, teaspoon of lime zest. All right, go that in there. All right. So now we got to bring this to a slight boil. So I'll try to heat up a little bit more. And um, when it gets to a slight boil, reduce it down to a medium heat and allow the broth to simmer at least 10 minutes. Okay, by doing that, that's going to infuse some of the flavors in there. You got the ginger in there, you got the, the garlic, you got this lemongrass. And so, it's going to uh, infuse it. Then, after you get it all simmered down for 10 minutes, you can take out the lemongrass. All right. So, it's starting to get a little more heat to it there. And, um, don't worry, I'll get it simmering, and uh, we'll be back in the next step. Alright, so it's about simmered about, oh, seven minutes or so away. You can see it's uh, getting a little bit darker sauce here. It's getting reduced, and, um, it's smelling really good over here. So, we got that going. And then over on this side, we've got some baby bok choy. So, baby bok choy there, um, you know, it doesn't look like that always. And it comes in, you know, bigger leaves than this, right? It was by the white part, the top part. And they said just to, uh, I think, cut, cut into quarters. So I'm assuming they mean the whole thing, just chop, turn it and chop. But um, I like clean stuff in my food. And if you pull off the leaves of baby bok choy, sometimes there's a little bit of grit down here, a little bit of dirt. So I washed all that extra... Uh, uh, minerals off and um, chopped it up so it's easier you know to eat. You got you got these bigger chunks here like so. So chop them off but at the same time I'm keeping some leaves intact stock part just for fun. Then we have our shiitakes right there. They're all chopped up and ready to go. And over here patiently waiting we have the cod fillets. The cod fillets, we have, um, what do we do with that? Took them out of the package, because we don't have any fresh fish in this area. And, um, washed them, made sure there's no bones sticking out of there still. And then, uh, we had some pepper. And it doesn't really say what pepper to add, it actually it says salt and pepper, but I'm going to do some grinds of some, uh, black pepper there. And you know what, I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, some white pepper. Alright, just like that or so. And what do we have next here? Oh, getting close to it. What we have down here, we have the coconut milk. Would you look at that? And this is not cream of coconut. This is actually coconut milk. They milk that coconut. Um, 
Yeah, so coconut milk is actually, you know, the, the, the meat, the pulp of the coconut, and it is um, boiled with water, I believe. Alright. Get back on this masterpiece here. And. Okay. Now, what you do here is you go ahead and you strain out any of that lemongrass in there. So I got a nice little strained spoon. Of course, yes, do it this way, it's going to get some of the garlic also and ginger. But you know what? You definitely don't want the lemongrass. Garlic and ginger could stay, but lemongrass, gotta go. Let's see here. Got a nice little slot spoon for this. And I just kind of, uh, maybe try to bring some stuff up here. Let's see, I don't see any lemongrass in there. I see a lot of other stuff. Next we'll be adding the coconut milk. Alright. Get the bits of pieces back in the party. And uh just a couple. Okay, so got that there. And so the amount of coconut milk I'll be under this is one cup. And three quarters. And this is also the time where you add in your fish sauce. And then a tablespoon of that. Um, this is one of the reasons why I've not added any more salt to the dish. Because I really don't think we need it with this fish sauce. Do a full tablespoon of that. In there. And then uh, give it a stir. All right, combine everything nicely. Good luck finding that lemongrass snap that's in there. All right. Got that going there. Now we can put the cod pieces in actually. And we'll bring this to a simmer, so I'm going to go ahead and trim up the heat a little bit. To f well, this thing is a 4.5. And uh, gently put this cod in. Bloop. And bloop. There. Wash the fishy fingers off. And now uh, we'll get that simmering again, and then after it's simmering, it's only boring. We're going to just cover it up and uh, let it cook. So let me get the simmer going and we'll be back. All right, so you can see we got a little slight boiling action going. And uh, give this one more little stir. Seems to be right between the two pieces of fish. It's concentrated. So it's scoop and part. And we put a lid on. And if it gets a little bit too hot, we can turn the temperature down a little bit more here. So it's on medium low, maybe right now. And still bubbling away. So we'll let that go for five minutes. Alright, even gave the 
I'm going to cut a little flip there and uh, you can see basically the poaching is done. Granted, you could, uh, if you have a different type of thermometer, take the temperature of it, but I'm pretty sure these little guys are finished. So take them out carefully and we'll move them off to their serving plates, or in this case, a nice little bowl. And next we'll add the uh, vegetables back in, the bok choy and the shiitake mushrooms. Of course I say back in, but they never joined this part yet, so. Got that like so. And, and this mess in. Now granted this is where they come in, you know, with a bigger pot. That's why it looks like there's a lot more broth than there should be. And, I don't know, I'm still using about half the bok choy recommended. So, I'll scoop all that in there nicely. Get it back up to speed again for the heat. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover it up here. This here, once it starts boiling, simmering. Not quite a rolling boil, but simmering it. It's going to go for another three minutes. Three. All right, so we've got about uh, three or four minutes there, maybe five, of this here um, simmering away. So everything's looking pretty wilted and limp. And so now you go ahead and take out your vegetables here. And um, uh, then put them on your plate with said fish. Oops. And uh, let's see. Scoop it out. This is looking just about good enough. I'll fish the rest of these guys out later. So, next step is just um, basically can the heat on it. You turn that down to off. And uh, you want to add in your, your lime juice, your two tablespoons of lime juice and make sure you get that all stirred in good. One, two, lime juice in. Give it a stir here with this ladle and you can go ahead and ladle some over your fish. Like so. And now this is where having rice would come in handy, or even potato. But there you go. So this here is the poached angler from the uh, Fallout Vault Dwellers official cookbook by Victoria Rosenthal. And uh, I'm going to nibble on down this here, and I'll get back the review of how it turned out. Alright, so, me and another vault dweller dined on this dish, and um, you know what? It was good. The uh, poached angler. And, uh, I mean, yes, because I, cause I, did, I did change the recipe up a little bit. I just don't like doing that, especially the first time doing a recipe. But I did change it up a little bit, so we had a lot of extra sauce. But we only had like, you know, two pieces of fish. And, um, had more vegetables, which was fine. 
They, uh, in the picture though, yeah, it shows with rice. This is definitely a rice dish. I'd say this is kind of, you know, maybe Thai inspired with the, the lime and the lemongrass and ginger. Um, those shiitakes were, you know, thrown in there a little bit too. Maybe that's, um, I don't think it's shiitakes with Thai, but anyhow, yeah, it is a, it is a good dish. In fact, the guest vault dweller dining with me said that this recipe was so good she would think it would be a $25 item at a nice restaurant. Alright, so there you go. And um, it came out great. I liked how they have the little note here about um, cod and how they kind of talk about them um, in the past tense, as in cod's not there anymore in the future when the Fallout series happens. And so like I said, this, this cookbook's great. It has some nice little you know, small kind of, you know, handwritten notes there, you know, poached cod, marked off, you know, angler, you can catch those fish, and I think Fallout 4, and, um, yeah, so, for eating that last night, we both got a, uh, I don't know if you can read there, but it's uh, on the special, we had a plus two per, for perspe perception, for two hours, so, so we're pretty perceptive there for the rest of the night, and, um, you know, difficulty, this was listed as an easy recipe. Um, prep time, cook time. My, my prep time might have went a little bit over. Uh, well, it's also hard when you, you know, as anyone knows if you're filming a recipe, your prep time goes long. As long as your cook time. Just about. So my prep time was a little bit longer, but basically, you know, if you get stuff like your, your ginger, I think I said it before, if, if you get that, in, you know, in the tubes where they've already pretty much minced it all up and uh, shaved off the skin of your ginger. That's one way to save that. I even saw a lemongrass in a tube, but I thought, really? Does that just make the pieces hard to pick out, or can you actually eat the pieces then? I, I don't know. But lemongrass wasn't so hard to deal with. Oh, the zesting, yeah, it's a little bit of pain. You gotta find a good zester. Maybe a microplane is what you really want to use nowadays instead of a grater. So, a microplane. Google that if you don't know what it is. And, um, yeah, we, we had this actually paired with just a, uh, you know, as you saw, in uh, a bowl. They had a little, you know, ca capture some of that, that liquid, the sauce, and then we had it with a salad. And that made for a pretty healthy, good meal. So, um, you know, would I like to revisit this cookbook in the future? You bet I would. You know, there's, there's other stuff in here. You know, maybe maybe a dessert I might try next time. I was looking over these here, and um, I had the birthday cake. Whoop. And uh, so yes, if you have a chance, if you if you like games, especially if you like the Fallout series, and if you like food that so far seems to work out, you know, good. Like here's the next one I might try. These uh, buff out, right? They're like little buff out pills from the game. Um, with their matcha cookies, and um, you know, this, some of the some of the flavors, you know, might be a little bit you know exotic in here compared to normal palettes, but yeah. So if you like the, if you like the Fallout universe in a whole, and if you like cooking, this is definitely a win-win cookbook for you. Oh, that looks tasty too. All right, well, this is the odd job doer, and if you have any questions or comments down below, you know, go ahead and let me know. And uh, if you like these reviews, if you want to see another cookbook review, um, go ahead and suggest it. My um, collection of cookbooks is quite massive. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, you know, hit the notification button if you like this stuff. And uh, I guess that's it for now. Odd Dab Doer, out.